So I'm going to talk about a feature that was introduced in NX11. Uh, obviously, it's going to be in NX12. And um, it's really, really great stuff. And this is why I like it. So I've made a video and uh, a little while ago. It's called Styled Corner. And with the Styled Corner, it allows you to pick uh, your uh, input blends. Whoops. Uh, and then pick your base face. And what it does is it puts in this absolutely lovely corner. Okay. Now, here's the thing. Not everybody has a studio license. Not everybody has the capability of producing this type of feature. And because of that, you need some workarounds. So I'm just going to undo that. And the workaround that I like to use is, uh, again, it's a tool that was introduced. How do I go ahead and make this corner? And um, I'm going to go into Home, and here I'm going to go into Point. And the tool that was introduced is under Point on Curve. I'm going to pick this curve. Now, in the old days, all I had as a reference was the start of the curve. I could reverse the direction, and I could do a percentage of, right? I can go start of curve. There's my arc length, percentage of arc length, or parameter. But what I want is a start point. Now, the start point that I'm going to select is going to be at the intersection. Let me go ahead and turn these off. Turn that off, turn that off. And it's going to start out there at that intersection. And the distance that I want to go is, we'll just say, 8 for now. So I have the capability of starting from this point, coming out, whatever distance it is I need. Select my apply. I'm going to do the same thing on this curve. Select my start point. Again, my intersection of these two curves and whatever value it is I want. Select OK. And what that does for me is it puts these points right on that edge measured from this theoretical. And that's important because a lot of times you want to be able to construct this in such a way where if these tangent curves move, right? You can see I have an offset surface that controls that tangent curve and I have another one that offset surface that controls those are intersections. So if, if this changes, you can see those points, this point stayed linked to that theoretical corner, that intersection point. So now if I do make some big changes, this point will always travel along with that intersection point. Now, for the workaround, that's just a simple going into my curves. Let me do some bridge curves. I want to go from, we'll say, that curve to that curve. And I'm going to reverse the direction, reverse the direction, play around with it. And as you can see, I can drag it. I can get it kind of close, but, you know, that's not what I want. I want through point. I want it to go specifically through this point. Oh, let me go up here and change my selection. Let me go to existing point. Right up there. Pick that guy. And oh, i got to reverse that. I made a boo-boo. And then drag this one up. And once again, this is the same thing. I want to take this one. I want to say through point. And that point is there. The last thing I want to do is constrain face and place that curve on that face. So I have my curve. Select OK. Now there's my first curve. And I'll basically do the same thing. Let me just uh, hide these two to sort of clear this up a bit. And I'm going to do a couple more bridge curves. And I want to go from that. And you'll notice that I can come over here and specify object. And I can pick that point. So with this, I can drag this up. I can reverse the direction. I can, again, specify a point, say through point. What's my point? This cat right over here. Let me say my existing point. I want to go on the face, this face. So now I have a curve that's tangent here, runs through down to that point, sits on that face. And I'm going to do the same thing over here. I want to go from this edge. Selected object down to this point. Me again. I can either just drag that down, or I can just come over here and say through point. 
I want to go through this point. Once again, select my face, put you down, select OK. And those are now my curves that control that corner. So when I come in and add my surface, let's do a studio. I want to go from this curve. Let me actually change this to single. I want to go from this curve to that curve. Cross, here's cross one, cross two. My tangencies, this one to here, 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 and voila, have my surface placed in, select OK. Now, you'll notice that if I come down into one of these points, okay, so I have this point that's offset at 8. Well, I don't like it at 8. Maybe I want it at 12. Well, it updates just like that. Do the same thing. And again, it's a reference from this corner. Offsets updates, boom, all the curves are driven to those points. So very powerful tool. It allows me now to mimic exactly what that uh, style the corner uh, has given to me. So if you do not have a Shape Studio license, if you don't have the capability just to go in there and pick those and drop that corner in, this is your workaround. And that workaround is based off of these lovely little points. Now there's always ways to go about doing that, right? There are other ways and you, in the past that you could you just drop a point in there or you could drop a plane in there and do things uh, in that fashion. Um, but with this new functionality, this is how I use it. This is exactly how I use it. I can come in here. I can now adjust my uh, tangent magnitude. You can see I'm getting my update. So I have a lot of control over exactly what's going on in that corner. So to the people over at Siemens, thank you so much for putting that uh, functionality in. This isn't just the only place that you can do this. And again, this was introduced in NX11. Obviously, it's in NX12 because that's what I'm working in. But uh, again, thank you. Great tool. Uh, if you learned something, please like the video. Share with your friends and subscribe to the channel if you are not already.